Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to be talking about a few upgrades to the Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine, as well as some improvements I'm currently working on for that machine. Today I'll be focusing on two of those updates, which includes a pneumatic vise as well as newly updated MK4 chambers for the machine. So what are these two improvements? Well, let's find out. If you are a follower of my channel, then you may have seen some upgrades that I have made to the MK3 machine to turn it into a fully automatic injection molding machine. The issue was that the vise I was using was one that I bought secondhand on the internet, and to buy it new would cost almost $1,700, which doesn't really help anyone else. Plus, I was really using it for a purpose that it wasn't intended, not to mention the weight was about 85 pounds alone. So based on some heavy inspiration and guidance from the members on the Buster Beagle 3D Facebook group, I designed my own version of a pneumatic vise. One of those group members in particular was Matthew Delaney, who was the first one I had seen in the group to come up with his own scissor style clamp, as well as turning his MK3 machine into a fully automatic machine, which he was using to make wrench and socket organizers for his company, Alien Space Savers. It's a perfect example of a small company using a machine like this to be able to achieve their goals of mass production. I'll put a link to his website in the description. This is my version of the scissor style clamp. It's designed to take full advantage of the MK3 build area. It works by applying pressure to the SC100 pneumatic cylinder on the top of the scissor style plate, which pushes down on the plate and moves the mold forward against the front plate. I have measured up to 4,000 pounds of force with this particular design, or about two tons. Again, it is built to fit inside of the frame of the original MK3 machine, but does require a few adjustments. Now, I'm selling full kits of this vise, which also come with the additional pieces of aluminum extrusion that you will need to attach this vise to the frame. It also requires moving some of the original aluminum extrusion from the frame to the back to mount the new extrusion to it. Another thing I wanted to point out for anyone who is already assembling one of these vices, and that's you will need to worry about the way this vise offsets forces of your machine. What I mean by that is that in the original MK3 machine, you had all of the force of the shot pointing straight down to a manual vise sitting in the middle of the machine, so all of that force was pushed against the upright frame. We know the force is still being held in the front of the frame, but since the middle plate on the vise is floating, it can move back and forth so the upward pressure now lives on the back plate of the vise. This means that the back pillar doesn't have anything sitting on it to hold it down, so it will raise under that pressure. You will either need to clamp the middle right here to the table with some C-clamps, or just bolt it down to the surface like I did. So now I'll go over the mold that works with this vise. I'm showing the max size of the mold, but you can certainly make yours smaller than this. But the max size is 160 millimeters wide by 140 millimeters tall, or around 6.29 inches by 5.7 inches. Both sides of the mold attach to these mounting plates with all of these holes in them. These holes serve two purposes. One is for the mounting locations for your own molds, as well as holes for the ejector pins that I'll talk about in just a second. I have even designed this plate to work with the mold frames that people have already been using to make high temp resin 3D printed molds as well. There are some additional holes in this plate to either mount those mold frames horizontally or vertically. I mount my molds to this plate from the back. Also, just as a side note, I will be coming out with a video on how I made this mold with a fiber laser as a companion to this video if you're interested. If that video is already finished, I will link it above. Now, this mold attached to its mounting plate will attach to a plate that will house the ejector plate. The way that the ejector plate works is we have a back plate with a small pneumatic cylinder attached to it. On top of that, we have this small ejector plate that will directly mount to the pneumatic cylinder. The way I made the brass pins that will serve as the ejector pins was I bought some M5 brass rods on Amazon and using a mini saw cut them into shorter lengths. 
Then using a die set, I threaded the ends of the rods to be able to screw them into the ejector plate. I used this 3D print to make sure I threaded those rods nice and straight. Once I have added all of the pins that I need to the plate, I then attach the rest of the mold assembly. When the pneumatic cylinder is activated, it will eject the plastic part from the mold when cooled, and the process can begin again. The only piece carried over from the last vise was I was using this ooze guard on the mold. This again works by the plate being pushed back manually by the closing force of the vise, which exposes the sprue hole on the mold to the chamber. After the shot is complete, the vise retracts and the spring pulls this plate under the nozzle, preventing the plastic from oozing out and keeping the mold clean. So that is really in a nutshell how this vise works. Now, I did have a fully automatic version with the last vise, but I'm currently in the process of working with other people in the Buster Beagle 3D Facebook group on ways to streamline and improve the overall automation of this machine, which includes this new vise design. I'm hoping to share that very shortly. Now I want to talk about the new and improved MK4 chambers for this machine. This new chamber has a variety of upgrades versus the MK3 chamber, however, is still interchangeable with the MK3 chamber for those looking for an upgrade. The biggest difference you will notice between the older MK3 and the new MK4 is that the new chamber has a redesigned nozzle. The mounting screws have been removed, and now the entire nozzle is threaded and screwed onto the chamber itself. This makes for a much more secure connection, as well as opens up another feature of this chamber, and that is its expandability. While the plain MK4 chamber is the same 3 cubic inch volume as the MK3 chamber, you are now able to add an extension that will add 2 cubic inches to the chamber. It just screws on in between the chamber and the nozzle for a nice and smooth transition. Also, every extension has its own M6 threaded mounting hole for an additional thermal couple in case you wanted to have different heating zones. There is also a new plunger extension that will attach to the end of the current plunger extension to account for the additional length required for use with the added MK4 extension. The last upgrade to the MK4 chamber is that the plunger that actually pushes the plastic is now made from brass. It is the hope that having the plungers made out of dissimilar metal to the stainless steel chambers, that it will help prevent scratches and sticking in the chamber, and also prolong the life of the chambers themselves. I also still have to point out that using the MK4 chamber with the extension comes with a few other things that need to be updated. You will now be dealing with the additional height of the cylinder as well as the plunger, so you at the very least will need to extend or replace the vertical aluminum extrusion of the MK3 frame to accommodate for this extra height. You will need at least 800 millimeters of height if you are using the new pneumatic vise and the MK4 chamber with one extension. I have a 1000 millimeter aluminum extrusion on mine just for a little extra expansion room in the future. You will also need longer linear rods that hold the triangle plate to be able to leave enough room for the original plunger extension with the newly added MK4 plunger extension. I used M10 rods that were 450 millimeters long for my current setup. Lastly, for the upgrade, you may potentially want to swap out your pneumatic cylinder for a longer one. The SC100 by 200 will not reach the bottom of the changer with the extension on. Now, perhaps you are just trying to shorten the shot times by extending the time that the pellets can sit in the chamber between shots, so you may not need to swap out your pneumatic cylinder, but if you're trying to make a larger part, then I would upgrade to at least the SC100 by 300. Now, I know many of you will ask if you could just keep adding extension after extension until you get the shot volume that you want. And the honest answer is, I don't know. My guess is that if you have too much volume to fill, the pressure from the regular SC100 pneumatic cylinder might not be sufficient to fully fill the mold, but it's just a guess. If any of you out there try that, then please leave a comment below and let us know how far you were able to push it. 
Anyway, that is enough for now. And once again, thank you to all of you out there who have supported me and this project so far and really moved it from a little handheld machine that I didn't even know if anybody would build other than me to what it is today being used all over the world. Be sure to subscribe for more updates coming soon. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.